going to find a way to... So, aside from... I know that there's absolutely systemic racism. And I'm not just... I'm not, I don't want to throw that out at all. But I think that there's something about the spiritual... The ways in which these spiritual practices that you are discussing stand in the face of the way that fascism or authoritarianism wants people to view reality and spirituality. Yeah. There's something about it that is repulsive to them that they want to get rid of. What is it about... Aside, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not throwing out systemic racism and that, that's huge, but what do you think is repulsive to an evangelical Christian or to a fascist when it comes to the spiritual practices of the African diaspora? Look, I believe that it doesn't have only to do with the origin and only with race, which is a constructed idea to create hierarchies and to exploit the other. From my own personal experience, and I don't want to run over anyone else's opinion, because we are talking about an opinion. I haven't done a thesis about what I'm going to say. That's okay. That's okay. I believe that the repulsion has something to do with the fact that many of the tejeros, these shrines, being a space of comfort, social comfort. Social comfort, I mean to open the doors and hug the other. You make the other believe in themselves. To feed with food. To feed with love. To make people have the strength of resistance. So these people can, in their daily lives, fight and destroy this racist structure. Not only this racist structure, but also sexist, and all these ists, the capitalists. The repulsion comes from that. So it stands, to me it seems like it stands in the way of this uh, project to make Brazil a sort of white, I mean, to really further this sort of white supremacist capitalist end, this game, this idea that we have to get to this point where all of these things that don't fit into that paradigm is pushed out, yeah. is destroyed, right? You say that, that it, and this has been going on for hundreds of years. So I guess to ask, like, what is what does resistance look like to you in this context? I mean, how... How are people that are doing the spiritual practices, these religious practices, how are they, how have they traditionally or in right now resisting this project to, to destroy them? It's a very old project. So the strategies are diverse. The quilombo which is a structure from another time. It was a way of continuing existing, of surviving. And I believe that the tejeros, these shrines, are similar structures to these quilombos. My mother's shrine, for example, many years ago we removed from the front entrance any sort of sign or artifice that might give away that that was a shrine. My mother advises, because forbidding she doesn't do, to not go out with necklaces and clothes that give away your religion. Not only for worry about some attack, but because the faith and the belief aren't in these things. They're inside each one. So I am not going to take this risk if my faith is unshakable. I believe that since the aggression, the authoritarianism has been very strong, inside your own home, you want peace. So we speak low, we make few movements, so much to calm ourselves, but also to not call attention of the other. 
Isso this na in the cotidiana. everyday sphere. Na so, pública, on the outside, there are social sociais, movements and struggles, and that's the moment of é o the struggle and the fight. Então, a gente so joga we com balance um and intersect these dualities verdade, of the aggression and the peaceful. Aspas, passividade. Pelo At least in my house, it's been this way. So it seems like there's a there's an understanding when there's certain times to do certain things. It's about survival as well as finding peace and knowing when to do things at certain times, right? We're animals, no? We have a very strong survival instinct. And we know the time to hide behind the bush and the time to attack. I, I just want to ask what you're what you're doing, what you're working on next. Like, what is your path right now with this work? My resistance project is to take care of myself. I continue believing in education as the most important thing to live, to exist. And that's what I've been building.